you're uh, regarded as the man in the Dublin, but you yourself, your admiration is for Luke Kelly, and it's a, it's, it's a, a kind of overwhelming admiration in a way. Why yeah, well, do you admire him so much? Well, I think he was, in, in what we do, and in the type of music in which we're involved, which is artist music and songs, mainly ballads in the, in the sense that there's songs that tell a story usually. You know, whether it be a funny story or a, a serious story, it's essentially, and the most important thing about it is words. And Luke had this, and also the music, of course. I mean, Luke had a, had a great musical voice, which I don't have. And uh, as well as having this musical voice, he had great enunciation. He got every word, you could get every word. And he phrased, the phrasing was so good that you, you, the story came across very clearly. And, you know, depending on the song, very passionately or very funnily or very... He had this great gift. And people have often said to me, I only said that about Luke because you used to sing with him. <laughs> and I say, no, that's why we sang together. Cause but you, you had your differences with him. Oh, plenty of them, uh, yes. Especially about trade unions and that. Really. Yeah, well, Luke was, was a dedicated trade union man, and I am a dedicated trade union man. But I tried to look at everything, you know, with an open mind. And uh, say, I'm all for unions. But uh, there are certain things that unions do, like a fellow looking for extra money because he has to sit over there instead of over here. That's just greed. And the same as, you know, what the employers suffer from a lot of them. And, you know, I think that's not valid. Whereas there are people dedicated to unions that whatever they do is right. I think, and I think that's a kind of blinkered vision of the thing. And Luke and I used to have rows over this. You know, I don't mean boxing matches, but plenty of shouting and roaring and get it off our chest. But at the back of it all, we were very, very, very close one another, I think, and the whole lot of us were very close, you know. Would you call yourself a socialist? I'd be afraid I'm allowed to call myself anything. I don't know quite now what I am, to tell you the truth. Um, I suppose I'm, I'm a Catholic who would, whose ideal would be, you know, that we have two coats, give the other one away, you know. And I know that it's not practical to give you know, you can't go around looking for somebody to give a coat away to, but there's always plenty of fellas around that are looking for a bit of something. Like. Well, does the Catholic Church influence you I mean, day by day? Do you find its teachings constitute a reliable guide to how one should lead a good yeah, well, life? It's, it's a strange thing, David. See, what I'm a Catholic, and uh, I'm not a, a great Catholic running to everything that's on. In the, I mean, in the practical, in the practice side of things, I wouldn't be. I mean, I am a practicing Catholic, if you like, but I don't practice every day or every Sunday. But I think what's important to me is that the things that Christ said, and I, and I mean, I've an awful lot of complaints, which I'm entitled to make, being a member. What are they? And I mean, the establishment of the church, for example. I mean, within the establishment, I'm not talking about the ordinary secular priest or the ordinary guy, you know, who's doing his job, and I'm not going to be say, I shouldn't play golf, that's sort of, you shouldn't have a motor car. And all. In, in this day and age, you know, I mean, it's become necessary to have these things. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not at that level. I'm talking about the level like where <coughs> people say, you hear some bishop pronouncing that, oh, well, we don't want to interfere in politics, you know. That, that's only a cop-out. That's only, that's only pretend. Because I believe if Christ was here, he would, he would, uh, and I mean, I believe certainly in free enterprise, but they use it as an excuse to become totally greedy and grab everything for themselves. And once they, they follow the practice of the Catholic Church, once they go to Mass, and once they give a certain amount of money to a certain organisation every year, then they can carry on. Because in Ireland, I mean, up to recently, there was only the one sin, you know, the three-letter one. And, uh, and it's very little emphasis on any other one. And I mean, some of these guys are going around, and the only difference between them and Al Capone is they rob you without having a gun, you know. And they feel entitled to do this. And I think they should get a bit of a lashing. I mean, we're constantly hearing sermons about an honest day's work for an honest day's pay, but we don't hear so much about an honest day's pay for an honest day's work. And then in the socialist side, if you like, I, I think it is morally and, you know, terribly wrong to see you have people I don't, I'm not going to say which is the lowest kind of work. I mean, people will say several kind of jobs are the lowest kind of work. And it usually involves the cleaning of things and so on. But if we didn't have them, 
you know, we've been in the right state. Because we're not going to clean up after ourselves. We're all too posh and we can get somebody else to do it. Uh, but he should have enough money. Now, I don't care if the big shot earn a million pound a day, but he should have enough money to live with dignity. I mean, if he drinks all that money, and that's another, oh, of course, don't worry, don't care, he'd only drink it. You know? <laughs> that's another excuse so they can grab more money for themselves. You give it to him, that's your duty to him. And like, if he burdens a light cigarette, well, that's... But I think you have to give him that. And money, I mean, it sounds an awful thing, but it's the only sort of thing we have to exchange one thing for another now. And if uh, Jesus were back here, you mentioned Jesus Christ, you said he <laughs> implied he would be involved in the political process. Which party would he belong to, do you think? Yeah, and I don't think he belonged to any party. <laughs> I, I, I'd say he'd just go around. I think he'd be a kind of a Jim Larkin, you know. He'd get up there and he'd shout and he'd do what he did before. Drive the money lenders out of the temple, you know. And I mean, they're all over here. I mean, we have people paying mortgages here. And nobody ever says a word about them paying mortgages, about the people they're paying the mortgages to. And then they get a fellow lending money up a back lane and they make television programs about them and put him along the street as though he's an awful fella, which he is an awful fella. But the other fellas are just as bad. Are these the people that you dislike most in our society? Yeah, it's the greed I can't stand, the, the greed. And and, the, and then it's it's the rationalisation of the greed then and and the justification of it. Oh, well, you see, we have to do this because and because and because and because, sorry. You know, I don't know. Because I mean, once you hear people trying to defend their, their position, I mean, I've, I've had good times, bad times, and it's totally my fault. I mean, if I'd have been right, say, in the 60s, I, and if I'd have been, you know, cute and cunning, I could have gone out and bought houses for three and four hundred pounds and had them let out in tenement flats. Well, I, I'm glad I didn't. I don't think I could live that way. But uh, even without letting them out in tenement flats, tenement flats, I probably could still have been. But it's my fault. There's no use in me saying, oh, well, I was decent, I gave away money and all that. What really came out was, I got a few bob and I blew it. And how did you blow it mostly? There was a lot of drinking. There was a lot of drinking, yeah. <laughs> was there too much done? So, well, for the time, no, because we were able to hold it at the time. And of course, we were getting taxis when we, when we could have got the bus, you know, grand, handy. Program. And it wasn't really showing off or anything like that. See, there are two kind of people, there are people who never had anything, and then when they get something, they get sort of that way. And there's the other guy who, when he gets something, he says, better get rid of him quick before I get rid of him again. <laughs>